me wrong, I ain't always right But I'm something like a 7 or 11 when I'm rolling the dice Tell them haters put on their boots and go take a hike Cause they like, I talk heavy, I don't need a mic Hello, hello, hello everybody We here with the Talk Heavy Show We have some special guests today We got A&D We got Skeet Boogie Ou déjà koné Moi c'est nom yore le Ismael Antoine Blanchard Je n'ai bel, venez bel, homme de bel and um, we have some interesting topics that we're going to talk about and we're going to touch on. Um, but what we're going to start with is uh, give us a little bit about both of y'all backgrounds. Um, and then we'll go into it from there. Your history longer than mine. Go first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let me see. Uh, been in the DJ game uh, 18 years. You know what I mean? Radio for about uh, eight. Um, and I was just going over with you the brief history of, of all the stations that I've been on. Right. Uh, you know, Magic 98.9, uh, 103.9, which is OC 104. Uh, Power 101.7, and now the late 97.5, everything urban. Um, other than that, though, man, uh, one of the main uh, core DJs in the area. Uh, I do a lot of sports activities and stuff like that. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest um, holiday tournaments in the nation right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, every every Christmas over at the youth, um, Wacomico Youth and Civic Center. Uh, other than that, though, man, if uh, music, radio, you know what I mean? Right. That's that's pretty much about it, though, man. And you grew up from around here? Yeah, definitely from, like, yeah. Raised okay. from Salisbury, born and raised Salisbury, Maryland. Right. You know what I mean? Um, man. Right. I, yeah. I'm going to fill it in a little <laughs> bit more for him. You know what I mean? He, he, he He's a part of Victorious Music, also a uh, leader of the crew. Yeah, the crew you know? 1200, man. Yeah, yeah. You know? and then uh, he's the official uh, Why High Basketball DJ, right? Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, and we've been rocking for about half of that time, man. We we started about a decade ago. Yeah. Uh, Skeet's uh, been, you know, kind of one of my go-to DJs for events and things like that. Right. Um, obviously, uh, I started as a hip-hop artist uh, around mm. 2008, 2009. Okay. And then, um, you know, kind of evolved into a, a promoter and uh, ultimately, you know, began uh, with uh, Deadstock, opened a store in 2014. Right. Uh, so we're going in our fifth year here. And then... Uh, you know, I proposed the opportunity with Skeet a couple years back to do the OG show. And, right. uh, you know, that's evolved over the past two years. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm involved heavy in the community, the Salisbury community downtown, uh, you know, Lower Easter Shore at that. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's awesome to be able to bridge the gap between y'all in Delaware and uh, Maryland and having those conversations between the two of us. So, right. Yeah. Now, there was three three points uh, that you had touched on. One of them that I wanted to ask anyways, because mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't know that you were an artist, but I listen to the OG show as well yeah. when I'm able to be up uh, later because I'm old. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I'll, I'll be going to sleep early. Right. But um, yeah, so in terms of uh, you as an artist, like uh, did did that develop like early on, like when you were like in school or did that develop? Yeah, I mean, no, I, I, I was from the, you know, I, I guess I'm not from the rap hood. I'm from the real hood, you know. Some people, <laughs> it, 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 you know, misdefine my complexion as, you know, I, I haven't been through the streets, you know. But the reality uh, is that, you know, I grew up on the east side and, you know, I, I, I definitely have seen all the ins and outs of life. Uh, right. I've, I've been through some of those trials and tribulations. So my music, you know, I've always been a storyteller rather than, you mm -hmm. know, talking about money, car, clothes, homes, right. all that good stuff. You want to talk about, you know, the substance and, uh, you know, say, La Vie was my one and only project, and you know, C'est La Vie, uh, you guys have a, a, a you know, Creole back row, correct? Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. C'est La Vie, oh, yeah. C'est La Vie is, you mm -hmm. know, such as life, and, and exactly. those are my experiences that I put out on the page. So, you know, uh, from going, you know, through relationship problems, uh, mm -hmm. you know, legal problems, and, mm -hmm. and other things, I was able to tell my story through that. So. Right. Now, uh, obviously, you're still, both of y'all are still exposed to a lot of artists. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay, first of all, do you ever get on the mic do you, or do you just spit sometimes on, on right, instrumentals well, here yeah, and there? I'm, I'm glad you asked that because <laughs> I, I missed the part, you know. Um, uh, and I'll be honest with you, this is my first time actually being interviewed. Like, you know, yeah, usually it's, it's us doing the yeah, interview, sure. you know. Right. So when you get me behind the microphone in the station later on, yeah. oh, it's, you know, it's, it's different. Well, okay, you know okay. So, but uh, I actually started out rapping. Okay. You know what I mean? Tore my ACL playing football, and, and, and once that went down, you know, I was like, man, I got to do something. Um, I had to sit out a whole nother, uh my 11th grade year. Mm -hmm. So during that time, uh, and big shout to Zeus DeCapo. He he definitely one of the ones, the day one guys that I know started rapping with. And you know, you see, he, he does the rap battle. He did was doing yeah, the rap KBL, battle. Yeah, KBL, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we're from the same hood, Jersey Heights, West Side Salisbury. Uh, started rapping, 
You know what I mean? And I realized earlier, like unlike some people, you know what I mean? If you know you can't rap and you keep trying, man, <laughs> shoot yourself in the foot. You feel me? But I told myself, I said, man, nah, this rap is not for me. So uh, you know, I told Zeus, and I said, man, I'm going to buy some turntables. And, and, you know, growing up, never thought that, uh, you know, never thought about wanting to be a DJ. Once I got into it, man, and, and, and you know, uh, shout out to my, my man Darren Dell, man. Uh, you know, free, um, free Darren, he's behind bars right now. Okay. Started with him. And uh, it went from there, man. You know, uh, matter of fact, uh, I'll tell you one of the first songs that came, when I first started DJing it came up was Nelly Hot in here. It was one of, when I first started DJing, it was like that. Premier, right. so, you know, stuff like around that time. So early right. 2000s. And mm -hmm. uh, once I got got into it, man, and, and went from there, just started doing, you know, house parties. Back then, when you could, it was safe to do house parties. <laughs> Nowadays, I don't know about that. You know what right. I mean? Uh, 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 whatever parties I could get into, man, whatever I could do, man, you know, then, man, I was like, you know, that young cat around here, you know. Right. Uh, so, like, like my man, big shout to DJ Karan, one of the youngest on the rise, you know what I mean? DJ Smiley, big ups to them, man, because I like their grind. Same way, you know, how I grinded and stuff. And then... Right. Um, I just went from there, man. Radio came about, uh, my man DJ Tavon, big ups to Tavon, man, you know, the OG. Right. Uh, he definitely, uh, we, he kept hearing about me and stuff. We had to be from the same same neighborhood or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's a lot older, so we never crossed paths except a couple times. And then right. we finally linked. He told me to get up with him. I think I was barely 21 then. I was about to turn 21. Right. Started going to the club with him. And then he, he would throw me on the set, man, live in the middle of a cranking party. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's like either you. He does either, that with Quran a lot yeah, now, exactly. too. He does it with Quran. Yo, you want to get on? Bam. All right, go ahead. You know what I mean? Throw you, throw you, and throw you in, in the jump. Right. So either you, hey, you got to survive. Right. And that's how I kind of finally got, uh, you know, my foot in the door. People got to know me and stuff. I used to go around, you know, I used to get the paint, you know, put a little uh, design on your shirt with your name and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was me. So, uh, Bottle Factory back then, man. That was, that was really my start heavy in the club scene and stuff, man. And it went from there. Um, but as far as the rap, as yeah. far as the rapping thing though, uh huh. You said if you weren't, if you like, you shoot yourself in the foot. Yeah. Like, it was did you compare yourself to who you were around? Because you said you were around Zeus. And oh man, I know you yeah. was around C Mac and them. So then, then I didn't compare myself to Zeus. Zeus had, but he was he had bars back then. I just I just I felt you know like man, listen. You know what I mean? I tried it, and it just was not me. <laughs> but did I'm you like, like it though? Like, did you enjoy doing? Oh it? yeah, I did. I did. But I you fun. felt, but so but, you felt like you wasn't good at it. Right. Facts. Okay. So I was like, yo, I gotta find another avenue. But now that you see all of these people that aren't very good at yeah. it, that are making millions, <laughs> do, you, do you still feel the same way that you gotta be man, nice to? Uh, I tell you what, every once in a while, I, <laughs> I might come up with something. Be like, yo, man, maybe I might have to try it again. Right. Well, because I feel you like, gotta think how music is nowadays. Yeah. You know we, I mean? we 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 hit the tail end of like. The substance era, you know right. what I mean? Oh, yeah. You know, some of my biggest influence were obviously were like Jay Z, DMX mm -hmm. was a big influence for me. Um, but you know, I, I always uh, thrived in the space where you know uh, you could you could actually hear the substance of the words. And, right. You know, I, it's funny. Uh, you know, Jess Hilarious, the comedian, she did a, a comparison video recently. Oh, with she the did Migos. The, yeah, and she, yeah. yeah, and she did the Tupac yeah, lines yeah, yeah. versus the Migos line. <laughs> yeah, and at yeah. the end, it was something about, like, cornbread fan. Like, she was like, what Crazy. the is this? You right, know? So, right. You know, I think, uh, I think substance is everything, man. And I, I feel like sometimes, you know, me personally as, a, as an artist, you know, I, I had a lot to offer as far as, you know, bringing substance and, mm -hmm. and relatable topics. And, uh, you know, at a certain point, you just realize that you're different than other people mm -hmm. and your, your your lane and your calling is different. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted to be, I had an opportunity. I had uh, two young kids uh, still, mm -hmm. well, I still have two young kids. <laughs> right. uh, and, you know, at the time they were, they, they needed me there. And, and mm -hmm. I had the opportunity. I was uh, sponsored by Scion. We were doing uh car shows and wow. we were traveling all over the region and I, they actually gave me a car that this they brought riding around town with the, with the name on the jump, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. And, and that, and that it was cool. But, you know, when I had that opportunity to go, I had to choose between whether I wanted to be a father and a family man. Right. Or, or you know, and not only that, but, you know, I've always claimed myself to be the, you know, East Shore Bun B, meaning that, you know, in Houston, Bun B was such a huge influence on that scene mm -hmm. to allow that, that not only Houston, but the Dallas and, and mm -hmm. the, all those surrounding areas in Texas to grow. Um, right. I really feel like that influence is, is needed on the shore. And, mm -hmm. you know, fast forward eight years, nine years decade into this game you know we, right. we we have both skeet and i have both been that kind of influence him on dj side and me on like a hip-hop side right. to cultivate artists so now that you got you know uh stizzy out in mm -hmm. atl and vegas and you got c mac you know out yeah. in la and and making the moves that he's making and, and killing it with his project so 
you know, those things take evolution and they take time. And, and I felt like, you know, my bigger calling was not necessarily for, you know, hip hop and making albums per se. Maybe it was right. influencing the culture. Right, because y'all, y'all basically like pillars of the community. Like, y'all developed yourself into pillars, uh, especially like helping promote other people, giving other people platforms, like you were talking about with C Mac. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, but even with that, the fact that, like, okay, you're still raising your kids, you're rearing your kids, you're, yeah. you know, you have a family, and um, the fact that you, you know, you have business ventures and stuff like that, do you, do you still, because you're still exposed to people and, you know, networking, you're still able to go into a booth, I'm sure. Yeah, most and I know that you still are able to articulate yourself on the yeah. beat, like because you're now not. I put a, a verse on uh, Jay Moore. Uh, Jay Moore was one of my employees. He's moved on. He's got uh, Lions Den Studios, which is literally across the street, directly across. Oh wow! And uh, you know, it, I, I've been an influence on on him as an artist and as a business person to kind of grow his what he's doing into a bigger thing. And right. you know, he he had the uh, mixtape. He got Skeet to host yeah, it. Big up to and, Jay Moore, uh, man. I slid uh, a, 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 the I mean? Neon Guts song that Pharrell did. Uh, he had a. He had an empty verse on it, and he couldn't get it filled. And I said, you know what, man? I got a 16 for you. There you go. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another thing um, that, because I got, like I said, I used to listen to uh, the OG show. I mean, uh, Skeet, I I, I heard his name before because of uh, DJing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then um, with A&D, I didn't, but then I recognized your voice just because I was listening to OG show for a while. Now, you having the Barry White type of voice. Yeah. And obviously, well, I'm not I'm sure I'm not the only one that oh, did no, not exactly. expect for <laughs> that did not expect for you to be uh, yeah. Caucasian or right. white or whatever. I don't know what yeah. you know, but not black. Right, right. <laughs> um I didn't expect that. How how is that has that ever um affected like once people saw you or did it affect anything? Like what you know, having that um I, you know I, I think i get it more from like women when they see me because they're like you know like you said it's like kind of a smooth melodic voice so mm-hmm. you know they're like oh my god i can't believe you know it's <laughs> like, and I, I to me I'm, I'm surprised oreo hasn't done the vanilla with the chocolate inside <laughs> edition because that would be more fitting for who i am but nah you know it's it, it, it definitely is uh you know a little bit of a shock to people sometimes mm-hmm. but then you know you hear me have a conversation or you connect with me you know right. that you know what i mean right. it's not just it's not just a voice you know i'm, right. I'm really invested in this lifestyle and this culture, most definitely, so. most definitely. And um, so like uh, I wanted to touch on the the fact that like with Dead Stop, you have great apparel and stuff like that. We're actually gonna showcase. Uh, we're gonna pick up one of these shoes and put them up there because they saucy in here. <laughs> but um, it, it's real nice and everything like that. Like, did, were you always like uh, in a an apparel head or a sneaker head and stuff like that? Like, Man, I, I had a, a picture of my mom took me. Uh, I was I was a year and a half old, and mm-hmm. I had uh, the Chicago ones with a little flight suit on. You know, the mm-hmm. Jordan flight suit, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know I, I got a picture when I'm like six or seven with the uh, Carmine sixes on, and mm-hmm. you know I'm sure there was plenty of shoes that I tore up in between. <laughs> and hindsight, I didn't really start collecting shoes until. Uh, I, I was about a freshman or sophomore in high school, so mm-hmm. I, and I wish I would have took care of the shoes that I had, <laughs> right. you know, because I, I obviously I got a thing for vintage pieces yeah, up on the wall over things, here. So yeah. yeah, it would be cool to have display some of my you know childhood shoes, but right. you know you, you run through them as a kid. You didn't think nobody. I don't think anybody knew. 30 years ago that Jordan was going to be such a pillar of, you know, Mm -hmm. not only sneaker culture, but, you know, just just basketball and Mm -hmm. and life, really, in general. So it's kind of like Nike and Jordan. They're they're, they're synonymous in a lot of ways. Right. So this isn't just about profit or business. You actually love. I've lived this. I I actually got the idea from the store. Uh, I traveled out to uh, Portland and uh, I was visiting a a girlfriend, a then girlfriend, Mm -hmm. and uh, I had four or five hours to kill. We were actually going to Seattle um, and mm-hmm. I had a few hours to kill in the city and I walked around and there was a place called Index PDX. Um, mm-hmm. Nice little consignment shop but out there they have you know the the twenty and thirty thousand dollars shoes that you know are one of ones like the Oregon Duck ones and right. stuff like that. So you know I, I saw that and I'm like, man, I really like the antique feel. Like it was like all hardwood. It mm-hmm. was a lot of you know the the metal piping and stuff that I have in the store now is a lot of that mm-hmm. that kind of uh, stripped down postmodern deco vibe. So mm-hmm. you know we we kind of shot for that vibe when we opened mm-hmm. the store and. We've recently just renovated to kind of transform the store and give it a new look, kind of a right. cleaner, more white, crisp look to the store. But, right. you know, that inspiration that I had walking around that city in Portland was like, 
it was the spark. I'm like, man, this would be great. And so I, was right. I actually started the store. Uh, when we started, I had probably about 130 shoes. And I, I used probably 50 pair of my, my own shoes to start the store. So, wow. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And then, so, um, like, I think the, the going into the OG show, because the, the, as far as Deadstock, I, I, like, I like what you're doing. I love what you got going on here. Um, some of the shoes I can't touch because they cost too much money. <laughs> um, <laughs> but... As far as the OG show, that's a, that's a whole nother element um, that that y'all basically came up came up with. Did did it was it like easy for y'all to do since y'all knew each other that long or? Um, so th th that kind of came from a space where I, I you know I was in my third year of business and I I was kind of stagnating with what it is that I was doing for the store and the influence and the you know kind of impact I was leaving and uh, I lost my grandmother uh, mm. she passed away and it was one of those things that in that process of grieving and trying to understand life and you know what she would have wanted me to do that kind of stuff mm. I, I I had seen Ron post a picture with uh, Charlemagne and it was kind of they were in the studio and <coughs> said big things are coming yeah and that's when they made that announcement and Ron and I had had a history uh, through just the music side of things and, mm -hmm. and you know me being an entrepreneur you know you kind of had a certain respect for me so right. I reached out to him and I said look man I, I need an opportunity and uh, mm -hmm. you know it was kind of a straightforward look you know I'm, I'm grieving right now I'm about to go you know bury my grandmother and I, I really need this opportunity for you know for not only for mental health but also right. in a, a desire to kind of just push forward and try to do something different so mm -hmm. in in that conversation you know, Ron kind of gave the go ahead and said, all right, you know, whatever you want to do. And I, I pitched the idea of, you know, it being about local, you know, hip hop and, right. and sneakers and the culture mm -hmm. and, you know, the beating down your block mixed with the rocker stock and these mm -hmm. kind of things uh, he was really intrigued by. And, you know, obviously I, I didn't want to do the show with anybody else. I could, probably could have picked either DJ, but, you know, it, it was yeah, it, you, was, it was definitely it sweet at the end of the day for sure. <laughs> So how did you feel about it when 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 he came to you? Oh man, you hesitant? What? Nah, no, nah, not at all. <laughs> it was huge, man, because uh, like I guess I had just made the move to switch to ninety seven five also with uh, and what we call now the Saturday night street heat, um, which I'm on seven to nine every Saturday night mixing. Oh. Uh, and and it was just like man, like all right, like we talked on the phone about it, and he hit me like man, all right, cool. Then we sat down, plotted it out. All right, we we'll try it out. My first time doing something like that, and right. then, uh. If you think when we first started and, uh, you know, the chemistry now, and we had chemistry, but as far as you, you starting a, a show from scratch, so you got to build a whole other chemistry. Right, 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 right. We used to go in the, in the, in the meeting room, like, pr our, do our own production. Like, we writing down times, you know, what we could talk about. Yeah, right. You know, we used to have go copy it up. And right. we used to go by the sheet, you know, and mm -hmm. it's like, man, like, you know. We, Similar to what you yeah. did with your questions, we would have it right. down had, to yeah. a minute so yeah. that everything flowed perfectly yeah. and we weren't missing anything. And, uh, right. We started off like that and actually, and we actually both together came up with the name of the segments and stuff. And he was talking about, you know, we're talking about sneakers and everything. Mm -hmm. And one of my slogans is beating down your block. You okay. know, like, yo, if I'm, if I'm, you know, I'm rocking, you know, you got me turned up or whatever like right. that. I'm beating on your block, you know. Right. So I was like, yo, all right, bet. I'm going to do, uh, at the end of the show, every show, I do a, like a little 10-minute mix or something. Mm -hmm. Beat on your block mix. So it gives you a mixture of stuff, you know. Right. And uh, it went from there, man, to a point now that we don't really have to write down what we're going to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Like, he'll yeah. call me yeah. or I'll be like, all right, or I'll call him like, bro, what we got going on this week? All right, yeah. cool. Yeah, all right, yeah. if it's, if it's an artist is coming on, all right, yo, tell them to send me the tracks. Right. We'll go from there. Right. Um, or however, man, we just coordinate, man. We'll go in there. And sometimes, like I said, we, we live. Like, yes, yeah. we, we yeah. straight live. Right. So something could go wrong. Right. The microphone might not work. Like, my mic stand for a while just wasn't, <laughs> you know, wasn't tight every time. It's bouncing up and down. Stuff like it's Like, right. simple stuff. But, uh. We work through it. Right. You know, straight live and uh we feed off of each other. Right. You know, it's it's times my hard drive might one show it might not want to read right away, so the show get ready start. I ain't got the music ready. You right. know, we'll be like I like bro, do this, y'all and we'll we'll get through it. So right. feed off of each other. Yeah, it's just it's just straight right. energy, man. And and here we are what just about real real close to the two year mark. Wow. Yeah. yeah. About ten months in. Wow. Yeah. So or excuse me, a year and ten months. Yeah, yeah. So and and then let's go back to the OG show anniversary party for the one year, man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Epic. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's something different, man. You know, right. and it, it really you know huge and stuff, man. And uh, the next one that comes up, man, it's gonna be even bigger. Right now, you, know, you touched on bigger. one point because uh, I like y'all yeah. having a show. I definitely wanted to uh, ask this question because okay, the process of somebody 
an artist, because y'all y'all be having artists for the most part. Right. Um, the process of getting an artist and then they send their tracks. Now, do y'all critique the artist first before they're able to go on there, or it don't matter how like who the artist is or anything like that. Y'all take them on and then and then like listen to the tracks and then ask them questions pertinent to. Um, you want to answer that one first? Um, a couple different things. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> it's been times uh you know. We'll have um, somebody actually like, and 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 might a couple words might not be cleaned on the track. Okay. You know, thank 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 God for technology. You know, <laughs> right. And how the, the DJ equipment we have nowadays, and they did tell you, man, it's time I done not clean the track live on air. Just because right. he you likes know? the song. Like the, <laughs> you know what I mean? So if it's something that came through that wasn't clean, I hurry up. Like like I tell them they like yo, y'all keep talking. You know, right. doing what he's interviewing, and I'm listening to the track in my head, and I'm writing down the times of the song where the cuss word is. Right. And when that time comes up, I'm you know it's a certain effect on my mixer that I hit, and yeah. uh, like you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So doing live stuff like that, um, as as far as listening to the tracks first, and mm -hmm. then we'll go through it, you know, and go break down like what we think of the, of the music and everything, um, and. I ain't gonna say recently, but if you hear me in the beginning, mm -hmm. dropping dropping the fire alarm, dropping right. the and everybody uses the funk flex bomb. You know, mm -hmm. it's not it's not even flex bomb no more. It's everybody's right. bomb. The money DJ machine Clue's bomb. The yeah, lasers yeah, yeah, it don't matter. He, he got effects over there. <laughs> I got sound effects. So if you right. hear us starting hitting that joint like and I got one joint that JD Cause drops his uh cop that back. If I cock that joint back mm -hmm. one, two, or three times. Mm -hmm. Then you know you got some heat. You yeah. know you got some heat. Right, right. You know you got heat automatic if you're coming on the OG show. Cause we're not just gonna bring you on. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I was. Nah, that's so, what I was gonna that's, say. That's, that's, going, that's, that's, that's the, yeah. the thing with me is, is uh, you know, I I handle a lot of the inboxing and the email stuff. And if I like something, I forward it to Skeet to let him listen right. to it or whatever. And and the thing is, is you know, I I feel like before you get an interview, you gotta we gotta put it out there and see people are actually taking a hold to it. Um, right. You know, the most recent one I could think of is Dusty Boy, you know, Dusty yeah. Boy with that No Days Off single. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a it's such a street record and it's, mm -hmm. it's got such a connectivity on a local level that you mm -hmm. know people and, and potentially bigger, but you know, around here people are really flocking to it. Right. It's hard for us not to show that love right. per se to that of somebody who takes like an industry beat, freestyles over it, you know, right. and and it's an average sixteen like not saying that it's not good, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, when when there's original content that's that's undeniably good, right. it's hard for us not to show that extra love. And I think a right. lot of people get caught up in the idea of like favoritism and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like when you're listening to ten to fifteen to thirty to you know we were, we we were taking submissions for the mixtape, which we're yeah. still working on trying to get complete. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was one of those things that you know we were looking at a hundred plus. Oh, submissions yeah, to we, try yeah. to get you know yeah. like 20 to 25 and, track and we, project. we in that joint late like we <laughs> right. in there vibing though right we going right. through all the track and we mm -hmm. still didn't get through all of the tracks right mm -hmm. you know and it just was and it's still like something we still working on yeah but just that uh you know the idea of starting that mixtape and everything and, mm -hmm. and all of us coming together right and uh big shout out to uh, help us help you mm -hmm. uh nace and all them oh, uh yeah. You know, it was just like, man, like the, the tracks everybody was sending and stuff, and people they were still sending tracks. Right. So you know, I mean, it's it's, it's epic when you can be an uh, influence on the culture like that. Right. But then I think because I mean, um, you mentioned um, Charlemagne the God was with uh, Ron taking a picture yeah. uh, earlier um, with different shows and stuff like that. Like obviously he's almost like a antagonist. You know, and he's also like a, a you know, try to roast people and stuff like that for the most part to, for a click or a sound bite or anything like that. There's Charlemagne on one side, but then there's the brown noses, the yeah. people that whoever go in there, you'd be like, yo, you, your shit is hot fire right. and it could be trash. So that's one of the elements that I was like, I wanted to touch on, but y'all just did because like, mind you, I reached out to y'all. Um, it's because I listen to y'all show mm -hmm. and I actually respect what y'all doing. Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't feel that way. I wouldn't have, I, w I wouldn't want to promote it or yeah. showcase it to everybody else because what right. we're doing is similar to y'all in terms of like trying to showcase local talent mm -hmm. and local stuff that's going on. But I like you know we are each other's reference. So like when people be like, oh you nice or whatever, and I'm like, yo that that shit was trash. Right. Like I don't like you know interviewers or journalists or anything like that that brown knows. So I, and I haven't. Like there has there there hasn't been one instance where y'all played a you know because y'all usually go into the track, mm -hmm. um whoever's there mm -hmm. and you know you be like ah you know why did you go into it but if it's not nice I don't hear y'all say yo that was nice right like I like y'all might say 
you know, like, all right, that's such yeah. and such and such and such, you know what I mean? Yeah, Let's yeah. keep that moving. Yeah, because you know I, mean? I can't respect somebody that, yeah. right. you know, just brown noses or whatever. Nah, you man, got, I you mean, you got to keep it 100. It's, show, I mean? it's showing love to the music scene. We, we definitely want to play artists, you know what I mean, to, to give the general public an opportunity to, to get feedback and think about it and be like, you know what, that's trash, or you know what, I right. like that joint. Right. So, you know, there, but there are the undeniable joints going in that skeet, skeet's ready with the cock that back or right. bombs or, you know, the lasers so that, because we know once mm-hmm. we put that out there, you know, one thing I, I, I do is the OG show exclusive and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, it, it, that once we put that stamp on it, mm-hmm. you know, people know that's a good record and, and you know, I, I think that we get more respect by, by being a hundred with it than right. trying to sugarcoat it and be like, oh, that was a really good track, whack artist. You know what right, I mean? Right, like, right. No, that's not and for it, us. It, it doesn't make you look good either. Nah. Like, nah. we can't refer people and stuff like that. But, um, so, in terms of, I, I remember you said you had an OG, uh, the OG show, like, two that's coming, like, the event that y'all gonna have. But in terms of forward, like, what do you, what do y'all have going forward in terms of dead stock? Are you gonna expand? Are you gonna go elsewhere? As far as the OG show, like, what do y'all have coming for, for the Eastern Shore and Delaware in general? Well, I, you know, with the with the store, um, we've actually added a second location in Ocean City. That's our we had our second summer there, um, and that's that's an evolving process. That's just a seasonal thing, but mm-hmm. it, we do a lot of numbers down there. But uh, right. we're looking to have a, a second standalone, you know, three sixty five store that we can have throughout the year. Uh, mm-hmm. We're looking at a couple different locations, so you know, expansion with mm-hmm. that is always uh, a good thing. But you know, uh, flip it to the OG show. I, I think that. Um, you know, our goal is to get in different markets. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to uh, ultimately syndicate and be in a situation where we can be in a hundred markets. But you know, even if we can get the opportunity to be in the Baltimore or the Philly, you know, mm-hmm. area, and having that two-hour block where we can, you know, talk our local talk with them in their areas right. as well, that would be ideal. I, I mean, I really don't see the OG show going in a direction of a, um, uh, you know, like a daily show per mm-hmm. se. I would rather, you know, have uh, if we were five days a week or six days a week, have different regions where we post up and we talk about artists in their region, you know, rather okay. than no, being... we we've been asked that mm-hmm. the people don't ask, mm-hmm. man, why ain't you on uh, uh, five days a week? Right? No, they they don't ask for it. So right. right. My answer to that though is it's a process. Most definitely, it takes time, you know, to get where you got to get, you know. Right. Uh, it's like Breakfast Club for for example. They wasn't they they didn't you know it took yeah. a while for them to get where they at. Right. So we, we grind you know we working. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean so. But just, the fact just, that y'all have a vision, yeah. y'all y'all know where y'all headed. Yeah. yeah. So I mean that's really good. But y'all uh. Well, plug it in. Plug, plug y'all plug ins in like the OG show whether it's Facebook or uh, uh, Instagram so that people can know exactly where to. Yeah, so it. check us out. Um, well, with the store, it's Deadstock SBY, like Salisbury, or Deadstock OC, and you can search that on Facebook and Instagram. Or uh, with the OG Show, it's uh, the OG Show on Facebook and Show the OG uh, on IG. So that's well, what about yourself? Just I mean, because you're uh, DJ man, too, yeah, so yeah, they want to yeah, book yeah, you, man, like myself, um Facebook, just DJ Skeet Boogie, uh, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, Instagram, DJ underscore Skeet Boogie. Mm-hmm. Just plain and simple, just like that. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? well, I don't try to make it too difficult. Right. So. Well, talk heavy. We appreciate the all fact right. that, you know, y'all came through. And I appreciate all of, all of the wise words. All right. Y'all come yes, up. Sir. Thank you. No doubt. All right. All right.